Welcome. Thank you for being here, guys, tonight. Tonight to tomorrow, the day, I don't know. Whenever time it is, you guys are watching this video. So, honestly, uh, when I first started streaming, there was so much videos and content all over the place. I really had to watch maybe a 20, 30 minute video to really figure out what I went to. And and honestly, sometimes I just skipped through half of it, went back, watched it at work, watched on my break at the gym. This is a lot. So basically, I want to take these down very to the basics of how YouTube used to be. It's a search engine. You type something up, it gives you a video of it, and you figure out what you need to do about it. Simple as that. So I'm gonna today we're just gonna do one about angles. What type of angle streamers use and which one usually which ones have you guys used why haven't you used it drop a comment below we're gonna go through all of them so today let's basically cover some of the few angles that i've Maybe. i've seen people use and then we'll um also sidebar i stream monday wednesday saturday and occasionally some sundays when it's a rating stream so those links will be below in the comment section and the feedback so you guys can just you know what to do with that so let's dive straight into this and let's talk about all these angles. First one off, the straight on angle. The most common one we're the most common one we're even using it right now. It's very useful to create a sense of having a conversation with somebody like we're doing. And it allows the guests to feel that you're directly engaging with them. Something you'd probably see in a just chatting session before people go live or in streaming sessions or a lot of YouTube content. Um, you may a lot of streamers use this one to not only look at the screen but the gameplay leaving a gap between the engagement and the chat and the game itself so you kind of want to combine everything together in some sh shape or form and really kind of like not have a tunnel vision the entire time so it's probably you'd use this maybe like 10 15 minutes with the users and then switch off to something else and just kind of like keep their attention you don't want them to feel uncomfortable and this is also shot on the, from the chest up we're using a little wider angle for this for these videos until we figure out a better camera solution so that's all in a bit all right next one number two the side camera angle this is usually used a little bit from well known well I would say a lot of well-known gamers like Ninja, Tim the Tatman, Harris Heller use this to display like their gaming setup, their monitors, what they're playing on. So it's basically you're you're seeing it's creating a depth in what the audience sees. So a lot of you, it actually also creates a moment where you can bring up different topics in the chat about what's in their background, either what type of computer they're using, who's there in the background, or even like what brands they're rocking on their shirts or merchandise. It creates a very third-party person point of view similar to what you'd see in Ratchet and Clank called um, Gears of War. I was going to say Call of Duty, but Call of Duty was completely first person, so completely scratch that one. And Legend of Zelda. So very, it's the sense of like, remember when you were kids and you'd watch like your older sibling or someone playing video games, like you feel like you're on the journey with them. So you're basically watching them continue or complete something. That's the sense of what you're getting out of a side camera angle. So it's very, not this, but more of like, these angles you'll see there'll be a video for that too all right one of my personal favorites and usually based on if i finally get a haircut or not is the three-fourths kind of angle and that's really basically because the lighting it allows you to create lighting dimensions so you can have one light a little brighter creating some shadows and some depth on your face and allowing you to throw different kind of like accents on your images so creating a creating a very engaging view it also allows you if you kind of like angle your game content in one screen and then also have your chat in the other screen. So you can basically have watching two things at the same time. You can do it here, but you don't want to look at the camera while you're doing things. I just feel like it's just awkward. Maybe that's just perfect preference for me, but it would be mainly here. I'd be trying to focus on that. Which leads us to our next one, which is a very bizarre one. I honestly haven't used it at all. It's, a, it's what people are referring to as the bird's eye view. And it's usually like you're looking from the top down and uh, you're looking from the top down. It's usually artists would have this or uh, if you have a camera at the top and it's just pointing directly down so you can like see the actions of someone's gameplay, their hand movements, if they're like esports type of competitors, um, if, um, content like that, or just like they're working on a project with their hands or designing something. So you want to like they want you to see all the details of what they're working on from the top down. Now, this leaves 
the audience feeling like they're looking down at the presenter or topic at hand sometimes. So I think that's why not a lot of people use it. So it's kind of like you don't want to feel like you're looking down on people, which is basically the opposite where we're going to our number five, which is the low camera angle. And that's basically you have your cam camera position in a way where you may feel taller and bigger in the camera, but it might make your audience feel like you're looking up at you. And I guess if you're trying to be a good role model in a sense that fits in the case, but realistically you're gonna make your audience feel small and you kind of leave, like if you're looking down at them to engage with them, that's not really a please, uh, pleasing moment, I guess. So might scare off some more timid or shy individuals from your audience while you're streaming. Now, another one that I see a lot of people use would be the wide angle, which is useful if you're creating like and set up a background. You want to show off your collections, your collectibles, say if you collect anime, manga, or swords, or whatever you're into, artwork, or just have a type of landscape background where you want to have that covered up. It's great if you have things to display. If not, it really leads to a very tiny image of you when you're switching over to your gameplay or just a regular just chatting screen. You're stuck covering maybe 20% of the screen while the rest of it is just taken up by emptiness. And it's one of those where you really have to go back to the videos, look at it and see what else you can add to it or just kind of crop your video to contain the better dimensions. And our last one, the close up. The close up. You bring your audience specifically to you to capture a reaction that you just had on gameplay. So maybe you just died in your fifth round of Call of Duty or got your ass kicked in some fighting game. You you basically zoom in and you can do this multiple levels, 10 zoom, 5 zoom, 150 zoom, depends on how much of your skin and pores you want to show off to the audience. So it's really all up there up to what exactly you're looking to do. You can also use this for humor and capturing interactions with people. So. It's a very uh, quick tool. I think we should, everyone should kind of use at least once in a while. It's not something I would think you should have your entire camera focus on the entire time, just zoomed into your face, capturing all your, just, you know, your bad, maybe you had a bad hair day, maybe your skin's not working for you, the lighting's off. You just don't want to do that to yourself. At the end of the day, it's also about presentation. So you kind of have to look slightly decent. Now, those are basically the seven. There might be a few more. I might have gotten the names wrong, but at the end of the day, those are like the most used angles I see individuals use while they're streaming, even on YouTube, making YouTube videos or making TikToks. At the end of the day, it's a camera. You point it, you shoot, you film, you record, and you post up. That's what everyone does. So let me know which ones have you used, you haven't used, you didn't think of. Or you're just maybe shy shy to post up with. Uh, if you're planning on using any, drop a comment below. If you have feedback or anything, just let me know down below. Or if you just want to correct anything I said, um, the links will be available at the end of this video. Also, the links to my streaming sessions will be there. So go ahead and like, subscribe, and help this vid video generate more content. And I shall see you guys next time. Happy streaming and have a wonderful session.